I'm going to give you today a brief overview of a groundbreaking new technology called Age Lock Vitality and the dramatic benefits this Vitality product has for athletes. My name is Robert Nagato Needleman. I'm with the Runiki LLC. We're a partnership, and there's five of us, including Amaji and Christian Devine, Robert Spindler, Christine, my wife, and myself. And my background is in molecular biology. I did my BS at Brown University with honors, and then I attended the PhD program at the University of California, San Francisco in molecular biology and biochemistry with the National Science Foundation Fellowship. And I have been certified as a American Council on Exercise personal trainer. I'm going to move on now and give you a brief overview of what I want to talk about because this is a very exciting topic. We're going to talk about how energy is produced in the body of an athlete. And a lot of you may already know about this, but I'm going to give just a brief description, which is a background to why age lock vitality is so powerful. And then I'm going to talk about age lock vitality, how it affects the mitochondria or the batteries of the cell, the amazing benefits to athletes, and how this is an exclusive to new skin. It's patented and it's uncomparable to anything else on the market. Mitochondria are found in most cells of the body. And you'll see this is a brain cell with a nucleus and the mitochondria. And the mitochondria use oxygen and the breakdown products of our diet, the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and how they're digested, combines that with oxygen and produces this high-energy molecule called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. And ATP provides the energy for muscle contraction and most all of the reactions that happen in the human body. So if we look at an athlete's muscle and we get smaller and smaller and we keep looking at it, the bone would be here in the tendon and then it moves into the striated or skeletal muscle. It gets smaller and smaller and we get into muscle fibers. These individual muscle fibers have what's called myofibrils in them, very small units of contraction. And you see these blue, little blue mitochondria. They are found in very large number in skeletal muscle and they provide the energy for muscle contraction. There's another kind of metabolism that happens without oxygen, and it's important to distinguish between these two. It's called anaerobic metabolism. We store in our bodies glycogen, which is a way that our body can store carbohydrate in the liver and the muscle. And when the carbohydrate's needed, the glycogen gets converted or broken down into glucose, and the glucose can then be used by the muscle cells. We're going to compare briefly aerobic and anaerobic energy production. Aerobic requires oxygen and requires mitochondria. In aerobic metabolism, you have a glucose molecule in combination with oxygen and mitochondria producing energy. You get a lot of energy. This is a very efficient energy production. You get 42 molecules of ATP for one molecule of glucose. In anaerobic metabolism, you produce energy, but you do not use oxygen. So the stored glycogen in the body is broken down into glucose. In this instance, one glucose molecule produces energy, but you only get four ATP. It's a much less efficient reaction. It is a faster reaction, which, is more which has an important reason. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We also produce lactic acid in, in anaerobic metabolism, and that's what produces that burning sensation in muscles. And can We look at a curve here, and this is for maximal exercise, the different roles of energy production systems. The first system that kicks in is this phosphocreatine system, and that gets used up very quickly. At the same time, anaerobic glycolysis kicks in, and that's this curve. And that's still a very short uh, amount of time that that system operates. That, that re requires glycogen to be broken down into glucose or glucose to be present, and then without oxygen, energy is produced. Now, a top, top, highly fit Olympic athlete can maybe go four minutes with uh, anaerobic glycolysis. Most people can go maybe two minutes. What's the most important thing that I want you to see from this curve is that this line right here is oxidative metabolism. That's using energy. Oxygen and mitochondria are required. And that is going to be the athlete's real uh, long-term energy source 
through exercise. And we're talking once you get into many minutes, into hours and hours and marathons. And that's when fat utilization gets that's used primarily for the, the uh, material to make energy. And that's very beneficial to an athlete because that means less carbohydrates getting used. So the initial muscle energy demands are too fast. Many people are under the impression that the muscle will use anaerobic metabolism because there's not enough oxygen. What actually is the case is when maximal exercise starts, ATP is being burned so quickly that it needs to be replenished very quickly. And so anaerobic metabolism must be used because oxygen and mitochondria take longer to produce energy, although it's much more efficient. So as soon as the body can switch over and let the mitochondria be the primary energy source and exercise, the better. And the more efficient an athlete's mitochondria are, the quicker they can engage aerobic metabolism for long-term exercise. So the longer you can rely on your aerobic energy system, the longer you can sustain efforts at reduced cost to the body using fuel from fat instead of from carbohydrate. And the aerobic system is loaded with mitochondria, and this powers muscular contraction. Mitochondrial capacity increases with training. This is a very important point. So as an athlete trains, their mitochondria have more and more capacity to produce energy. So moderate training is this, this bar more than the control that, that doesn't have training. These are top trained athletes with much higher levels of mitochondrial capacity. And there's an immobilized person, which is even less than control. So that's an important point. Some of the important goals of athletes are to increase their aerobic metabolism utilizing mitochondria. Another important goal is to maximize their glycogen storage. You always want that store of energy. If glycogen gets depleted and then blood sugar starts dropping, a person can experience what's called hitting the wall. Anyone that's had this knows this is not a good experience in, in competitive sports. It's also not enjoyable at all. The blood sugar stops getting to the brain in a high enough level, and the athlete cannot function in that state. But the studies have also shown that glycogen depletion in long-term exercise also leads to muscle fatigue. So glycogen storage is critical to a high-performance athlete. And another very important goal is to increase your oxygen uptake, and that's denoted as VO2 max, because the more an athlete can uptake oxygen, the more it can feed that oxygen to mitochondria to power aerobic metabolism. So this begs a couple of obvious questions, and this is another picture, very nice picture of a mitochondria. How do you improve mitochondrial function? Because that's going to be dramatically important to an athlete. What is the difference between younger and older mitochondria? We're going to look at both of those questions. And the answer lies in the expression of mitochondrial genes which asks the question, what is gene expression? And here's a pretty picture of a chromosome, and different scientists study how genes within the chromosomes get expressed. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of gene expression because it's extremely pertinent to what we're talking about here. Genetics are the basic alphabet of life. So the letters of DNA sequence carry information that code for all the proteins in your body. It's a basic blueprint to make proteins. However, there's a contrast between genes and gene expression, how those genes are used. And an example that's used a lot is hardware versus software. The DNA or the basic genetics can be thought of as the hardware of the computer, a simple Macintosh laptop like this. Gene expression is how the genes are used, and that can be a variety of ways. So a, a laptop can use Windows to run, can run Mac software, many different ways. There are many interpretations of the basic blueprint of DNA. And the, the factor that affects it the most is the environment. And environment influences gene expression. These are two twins. There are many, many twin studies being done like this. These women have identical DNA. They look very different, and the difference is they've had different environmental exposures. They've had different diet. They've had different thoughts and emotions. Everything affects gene expression. When you look at their DNA, this little area is showing that although these women have identical chromosomes, each of those is a chromosome, they're using them differently to express their genes. So gene expression 
is how a cell interacts with its environment and there and then chooses what genes to use. Another very strong example here is these are two genetically identical mice. They both carry a mutation called a Goody mutation. This mouse is expressing the mutation. It makes them overweight, changes the coat color, they make them prone to diabetes, heart disease, cancer. The only difference between these genetically identical mice is that this mouse, when she was in utero, her mother was fed extra B vitamins, extra B12, extra folic acid, and that alone was enough to shut off this, this agouti mutation and produce a normal mouse. So there's a lot more to the picture than just the genetics. The gene expression is what matters. This gene has been shut down through environmental influences. So we can express, we can affect the expression of genes. And the same thing's going on in muscles. Every time exercise is performed, gene expression changes occur within the muscle. And as a person trains and trains, these cumulative effects lead to changes in what's called muscle phenotype or how the muscle expresses its genes. And one of the most prominent is an increase in mitochondrial content, which confers greater resistance to muscle fatigue. This is of utmost importance to an athlete. Now, the age lock breakthrough that we've had in New Skin Enterprises and Pharmanex, which is the supplement branch of New Skin, the old paradigm was that aging is inevitable. There's nothing you can do to influence the genes you've inherited. And Time Magazine published this cover article and another one also last year, both were last year, in 2010, Why Your DNA Isn't Your Destiny. That's because gene expression is different from genes that you inherit, the basic DNA blueprint. The new paradigm is that the expression of age-related genes can be influenced and can be influenced back to a more youthful state. And that's what age lock technology is. And this is where age lock vitality comes in now. This is a, the reason I say it's such a groundbreaking technology is we've never been able to affect aging at the source, at the genetic level of gene expression. And age lock vitality produces three dimensions of vitality, physical vigor, mental acuity, and sexual desire. When we look at mitochondrial activity, and many studies have been done on this, mitochondrial activity declines with age. By 40% in uh, 61 to 84 year olds. What we've discovered in age lock is we have identified and influenced 52 genes that are tied to the function of the mitochondria. These are genes that change with age. We have termed them youth gene clusters because they're groups of genes that over time were once in a youthful state and change with age. What age lock has been able to do, and specifically age lock vitality, is to influence those genes so they express themselves in a youthful state. So they express themselves as young mitochondria. Mitochondria are highly concentrated in the brain, the heart, and the muscle. So we see dramatic effects of age lock vitality on these three areas of the body. The question for me is how is New Skin able to do this? Here's how. It's a huge task. We have 100 PhD level staff scientists, three laboratories, so we're working around the world. There's a lab in Utah. There's two labs in China. We have exclusive partnerships. LifeGen Technologies, I'm going to say a lot more about in a minute, Stanford University, Purdue University. We work with over 150 universities in collaborations at Harvard, UCLA, Columbia, Duke, Beijing University, many, 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 many more. Dr. Richard Weindrick is one of the founders of LifeGen Technologies. He's been interviewed all over the media, CNN, 60 Minutes, CBS, because he is a foremost expert on genes associated with aging, on affecting genes, and causing a reversal of expression of those genes back to a youthful state. And he's done work on what's called caloric restriction. For over 30 years, LifeGen Technologies has studied genes that change with age. So we have a 30-year jump start on any other company because we have this data bank of genes 
throughout the body that change with age. LifeGen has patented this gene expression profiling and identified what we call youth gene clusters, as I said, and that's only because of the long-term research that's been done. And here's the technology. This gene chip right here, it's called an Affymetrics chip or a gene chip. It costs about $10,000 to run this experiment one time, so you need to be a very wealthy company also to be able to do this. This little area contains all 20 to 20,000 human genes. The entire human genome is on that little chip. And this is a, called a DNA microarray. And that shows the gene level expression of all of the genes in the human genome. And when you know which genes are the youth gene clusters, which is no easy task, you can then look at their specific expression and generate this DNA heat map that shows you which genes are highly expressed and which genes are less expressed. So now that we know the genes in mitochondria that change with age, we can look at youthful gene expression, and these are those 52 genes, each one in one of these little bands, and older gene expression, each one in these little bands, and you, you can screen for ingredients based on this kind of a gene modulation experiment. Nobody else can do this because they don't know the youth gene cluster. Now, as you can see, ingredient number four produces a very similar pattern to the youthful gene expression pattern. So young mitochondrial gene expression and old mitochondrial gene plus adding ingredient number four produces a profile very similar to young mitochondria. We're literally resetting the youth genes back to youth. And this is about balance. It's not about one gene. Any company that says they found the gene for aging is inaccurate. Genes work in groups. And this is balance. So we're turning down genes that accelerate aging. And we're turning up genes that preserve youthfulness. So when you make a product that affects a youth gene cluster, you have to turn down the right genes and turn up the right genes. And when we look at the studies being done now, age stock vitality improves physical endurance. Well, this is on a five-week study, 63% increase in time to exhaustion on the treadmill with age lock science. Muscle glycogen storage, we talked about how critical that is for an athlete, has increased 57% with age lock vitality. Mitochondrial enzymatic activity, that means the enzymes in the mitochondria, when they're measured, are more active, which means mitochondria are working more efficiently. 36% increase on age lock vitality. And cognitive function goes up dramatically. This is the placebo control, and this is on age lock vitality, and this is based on the composite cognition index. So in addition to all the, the endurance and physical benefits to an athlete, to have increased cognitive function and stronger focus is critical to a high-level athlete. I'm going to go over the ingredients. Cordyceps CS4 mushroom is the most prized medicinal mushroom out, outside of China, and New Skin has exclusive rights to the CS4 strain. This is the only strain recognized by the Chinese government. It's under intellectual property protection by New Skin. So this strain, which is the closest to the ancient strain used in China, is only in AIDS Lock Vitality. You cannot find CS4 in any other product. Pomegranate fruit extract. When you test pomegranate fruits, when you have the ability, the biochemistry to test, 99% on the market are found inactive. We have a patented proprietary extraction process. And we know this is an active product because we show it by the effect on the gene expression in the mitochondria. Pharmanex Asian ginseng root. It's RB1, one of the most active components in ginseng. Proprietary, unique, biologically active extract. But all of these are chosen through these gene modulation studies. On top of that, we have patented the blend. So even if I gave five people the same ingredients to make a cake, all of those would come out differently because the recipes would be different. We have the recipe to affect the youth gene cluster of the mitochondria. 
Age Lock Vitality has been HFL Sports Science Bio Research certified for no stimulants or banned substances. Chosen, as I said, through these gene modulation experiments. Only new skin can do this. We have 30 years of research with many, many, many scientists, and we know the genes that change with age. To give you an idea of the quality of our company, Pharmanex, we also have a study with uh, highly elite athletes, U.S. Navy SEALs, taking one of the age lock ingredients, age lock vitality, CS4 cordyceps, six weeks, increased their VO2 max. That's a powerful statement. We also showed it increased VO2 max and stamina in the elderly. But the fact that it affects elite athletes is, a, is of extreme uh, importance to highly trained athletes in competition. We were also the official nutritional and dietary supplement, vitamin, mineral, and phytonutrient sponsor for the 2000, 2002 and 2004 U.S. Olympic teams. We competed against 500 other supplements. It required extensive testing of our supplements. This was not something you buy a sponsorship. You have to earn this from the Olympic Committee, and Pharmanex did this for three consecutive Olympic teams or training years. Five Pharmanex products listed in the physician's desk reference. We were the first supplements to be in the PDR. We have a flagship overall supplement called LifePak Nano, it's got over 60 antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and it's guaranteed absorption of these antioxidants. And we have this product as well as four others in the physician's desk reference. Our findings are patented. AgeLock Science has 14 patents, and there's more on the way in multiple countries, either approved or in process, so that no one else can do this technology. This is exclusive to AgeLock Vitality. I would strongly recommend you take Vitality for at least a 90-day trial period. This is not something you take before a race and then don't take it. This is you take consistently. And the normal dosing is six a day. You can do three in the morning, three later in the day. People break it up differently. But it's something you take regularly because you're influencing the gene expression of your mitochondria back to you. So I strongly suggest committing to a long trial period and just watch the amazing results. Thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to hearing all of your amazing, amazing stories in your performance, in your training with Age Lock Vitality. Thank you very much.